Welcome to Haxby Shed and Odd Jobs and Stickers 9. Gosh, isn't it hot at the moment? They say that in about two days from now, it'll hit 41 degrees. Well, that's about 107 Fahrenheit, I think. And that'll be a couple of degrees hotter than the highest ever recorded temperature in the UK. And we're all cooking like crazy. I know to some people it's probably quite cool, but for us, you know, that's pretty hot. So today I've got three odd jobs to show you and three channel stickers. And I'll do as I usually do. I'll put a bit of video on the uh, clipboard here and we'll have a look at them and then we'll put the stickers on the door. But just before we look at the odd jobs, I'll just tell you, I bought one of these. You'll recognize it straight away as one of those DTI stands, which is magnetic and you can adjust it with a single dial with all of the joints. I got so sick of using this thing, which has got one, two, three knobs on it. And, uh, you know, for a 10 minute job, I could ten, spend 10 minutes adjusting this thing. So this one was uh, 34 pounds, which is about $41 US, I think. And I'm liking it already. So let's have a look at the odd jobs. This was going to be so simple and straightforward. Five minutes to change a plug. It's turned into an odd job. So you join me about halfway through where I found the problem. This is the motor from a strimmer for cutting grass edging. And it's a Black & Decker 12 inch strimmer. So I've got it apart. My daughter borrowed it. She had it for quite some years. I thought I'll do the decent thing, cut the grass. I'm not much of a gardener, but I thought I'll do the, you know, I'll do the edging. I'll start where I mean to go on this season and actually do the edging. Anyway, it spluttered and coughed and gave up. <laughs> to cut a long story short, I think the brushes are sticking. I'll just set it going and you'll see. So with a bit of poking around, I have managed to get it to work. Oh, shouldn't have done that, should I? That's better. So it's the usual setup. The brush is run in a sleeve and there's a fairly light beryllium copper type of clock spring thing there that just keeps the pressure on. So I think we've got corrosion around here and the brushes are just sticking in that sleeve. So I'll get them out if I can and just clean them up. There's plenty on the brushes, look. It's just corrosion around them in that sleeve. I'll clean them up pop them back in and it'll be fine. Well, the one at this side is well and truly gummed up. Let's see if I can get that out. There we are. It's just green copper corrosion. That's all it is. We're on our way back together now. Everything just presses into place. Yeah, just about. And then there are just these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws. And then the tricky bit is the shield goes on the front here, but it has to rotate to lock. And there's one screw in the shield. And of course it's reversed to get it off. You've got to take that screw out. And there's a clip as well. You have to press down a clip and then rotate the shield off before this will split. This shield is a bit tricky to get off, but there's just one clip there that you've got to press up and one screw here. Come on, clip in. Click. And the one screw. That's it, done. But I've used all my energy now, so I think probably I'll leave the strimming till next year. Here's an odd job. A little bit of stainless steel welding practice. Can you spot anything wrong with this? <laughs> so I was using it the other day and uh, there was a sort of a snap noise. That came off. So I'm just going to see if I can... Uh, weld it. Uh, I've had it for years. I don't care what it looks like when I've done it. I don't care if the time is bent. I just want to see if I can do it. The problem with it is the metal had become very crystalline and it's got an impurity in there which I can see. I'll show you. 
but I'll just uh, grind some of it off, set it up, tick it, see what I can do. Might work. You can see the end where the tine has snapped. The metals become very crystalline and also you see that impurity. I've ground away both parts to clean it up a bit and also it should give me some space to make a fillet. Right then, I'm just going to start with a tack. Clamps on, welders on, gas is on, good start. Try and rest on this bit of fork here, here goes. So just a tack to start with, 308 rod, that went really easily actually. So now I'll go and fill that, fill it up from both sides. It's 115 amps continuous. Well that didn't go too badly, but there was of course a learning point for me because I'm only a TIG beginner and that is when I made that fillet here I hadn't taken enough metal away and the V was too narrow and I couldn't get my torch in to weld at the bottom of the V. I should have opened it up a lot more and so you see that kind of bubble there which is still hot. Um, that's as a result of uh, gases being trapped underneath the weld. But it's only a gardening fork and uh, if it breaks again even it doesn't matter actually. So next time I'll make the V larger. But otherwise I'm actually quite pleased with that as a beginner you know. So that's another odd job done. Here's an odd job but to be honest it's a bit of a moan. I used to have old shears which were complete rubbish and I thought I'd treat myself and I'd buy myself some decent shears Spear and Jackson which is a long established brand in the UK a quality brand and that was two to three years ago when I bought these and now already the knob has broken all of the uh, bits of plastic around here which go around this have snapped off because it's gone hard complete rubbish you know that's how you destroy your brand guys. Don't be run by accountants. Make stuff that actually works. All I've done is I've taken a nylock nut, flipped it the other way up, put it through this washer and it's okay now. But for a lot of people, you know, they would go away the idea that the, the brand is rubbish. Sorry, that was a moan, but oh, honestly, it's so frustrating. Just make proper stuff. Well, I hope you enjoyed the odd jobs. So the three stickers are one from the UK, one from America and one from Australia. So we'll do them in the order of uh, distance, nearest first. So the first one up is Ollie's Workshop. So he's got about 700 subscribers at the moment. Uh, he operates from a wooden shed, which I presume is in, is in his garden. And in this video clip, uh, he's telling us all about setting up a new VFD. Hi, welcome back. I've just bought myself a high quality VFD from Amazon. I'll take you through how to connect it and how to set it up. So this is my uh, Kerry Super 8 benchtop drill. So when I got this, it didn't have any kind of drive with it. It just had a three phase motor, nothing else. So uh, the very first thing I did was I used a couple of big capacitors to shift the phases um, from the single phase. And that will make a, uh, a three phase motor run, um, just not very well. Uh, it kind of worked, had very little torque though, so it wasn't a whole lot better than the old uh, Clark Metal Worker. At the time, this was probably eight, nine years ago, looked at the price of VFDs and I, they were all sort of 150 plus pounds and I thought, I can do that cheaper. So I built my own, which you um, might have seen briefly on previous videos, um, consisted of a, a microcontroller um, on a home brew circuit board um, and a, a power stage, which was a... A module which I bought which has got all the, the um, power transistors in it sorry about the crack
crappy focus um, and then yeah the rest of it's just sort of uh, filtering and the next channel up is Bear's Rod Shop. Now Bear is in Texas. His channel's not so big yet. He's getting 50 or 100 views per video, something like that. But there's a bit of a backstory to Bear, and that is unfortunately his wife is very poorly. He tells us all about it on the channel. I'm not going to say, um, but if you watch it, you'll see. So I do hope you'll give them your support. In this video clip, Bear is trying to <laughs> transport a clop shaper into his workshop, the big heavy thing. It's far too heavy, I think, for the tackle that he's got. But uh, I love those big heavy shaping machines, so I think you'll find it quite amusing, actually. Yeah, welcome back, everybody, to Bear's Rod Shop, BRS, and the Lot 450 sets here on the floor. Was shooting video of unloading it, which took eight hours yesterday, and I decided it was way too long because not real good with video and fast forwarding. But you can kind of see the predicament we're in. We used our wonderful neighbor's trailer, which had a wood floor. No, it didn't slide easy. We backed in there on the big old huge ramp, which is now in the air, to get the cherry picker in. And uh, it took eight hours to get this thing because the crate decided to give up in the bottom and start pinching all the rollers. Ended up with a quick bolt uh, three-quarter in the floor here, which is no problem. I may leave it for a while. After I trip over two or three times, get it out of here. Let's take a little walk around. And the third channel this time is Matty's Workshop. He's in New South Wales. He's got about 10,000 subscribers already. Uh, and in this clip, he's working on the gearbox for a radial arm drill. I like, I you know, when I'm picking these videos out, I always look for ones that have got quite a lot of views, if I can find those, uh, but also subjects that I particularly like myself. And these big, heavy, clunky machines, like shapers, like radial arm drills, are things that, you know, I like to see myself. Hey okay, guys and welcome back. Uh, I hope you've all had a wonderful Christmas and um, wish you all the best for the New Year's. Uh, long time viewers of this channel would have heard that I picked up a radial arm drill, uh, a Serbian radial arm drill, oh, probably four months ago, five months ago from a chap in Victoria. From His name is Matt. Um, from Man Cave Engineering, not to be confused with Man Cave Metals. He contacted me through Aaron from Aaron Engineering and wanted to know whether I was interested in this radial arm drill. So he, I took him up on the offer. Um, there is another machine still out on the market now, a Borger, I think you pronounce it, a Borger. They run a very similar gearbox. They're a dry gearbox. There's they don't hold oil, um, they just run on grease inside there from what I can work out, but it's pretty messy, it's had water in the gearbox, yeah, I'll show you anyway, I'll spin you around and show you the gearbox and um, you, you can see for yourself what we're up against. So here we've got the gearbox, this pile of bearings down here, that's what come out of the top plate, as you can see they were just smashed to pieces. Um, as you can see that some of these gears are pretty well pitted so I've got new bearings for all them coming uh, yeah she's had a bit of a life the poor thing but you can see here the amount of goop that was in it so all this has got to be cleaned up good and well this shaft here does have a bit of pitting around that bearing. I'm not concerned about it. I just want to get it up, get it running. If it does give grief, I can always make a new shaft later. If you'd like one of my stickers, send me an email to this address and I'll send one to you anywhere in the world, whether or not you have a channel. And if you'd like to send me a sticker, I'd be delighted to put it on the board here. Now as I look round this, there's a couple of countries missing. 
if I look at my top uh, five countries by views, Canada's missing. So come on Everett, get that sticker in the post. But also India is missing because about 4% of my views are in India. So if you've got a friend running a channel in India, just give them a nudge for me, will you? And we'll see if we can get a sticker on the door. I hope that was interesting. Thank you for watching. Hacks be shared.